Hello everybody, today I'm going to show you how to run the current version of the sneaker bot I have on GitHub. This is going to be a relatively short video, it's not going to be a tutorial, but rather just a brief overview of the bot, and instructions on how you can run it locally. And the reason why I'm making this video is because I've received a ton of messages on GitHub, um, kind of just asking for instructions on how to run everything. It is a web app, so it can get a little bit complicated, so I'm hoping this video will clarify some things. Um, for the past two or three weeks, I've been working on a second version of the sneaker bot, uh, to cop a pair of those yellow uh, 350 V2s, which look absolutely hard, by the way. <laughs> However, it's realistically not going to be completed by tomorrow morning, so I'm planning on having everything up and running for the next release of the Beluga V2s, or absolute worst case, by the time the blue tint 350 V2s come out on the 16th of December. So, like I said before, if you guys follow me on GitHub, you'll see that I've been making a bunch of commits to the sneaker bot tutorial repository, um, and that's where I'll continue to push changes to the bot. This is the bot that I will be using to buy the shoe, um, but I'm also going to try my best to make it as user-friendly as possible so that I can make a tutorial series that will show you guys how it's made. I also want to make this, you know, relatively easy to use because my ultimate goal is for this to be sort of like the go-to bot, open source, free, community developed. And I think having a tutorial series on YouTube where people can kind of learn, you know, what's going on in the background that might get people interested in programming and, you know, people who may not have a ton of programming experience can contribute to the repo. So, onto the actual install. Um, to get everything up and running, you're going to need two, uh, possibly three prerequisites. The first is obviously going to be Python, and then the second is going to be the Python package manager called pip. I haven't installed pip recently, but as far as I remember, it was relatively easy to install. I think it was just like a Python file that you ran, I think it was get pip.py, and it installed the package manager for you. However, there are a ton of Stack Overflow posts that explain it way better than I could. The third prerequisite is the source code management software called Git. Now, technically speaking, you could get away with not getting this um, and simply downloading the zip directly, but I really do not recommend this. I'm going to be making dozens, if not hundreds, of changes in the coming weeks, uh, so it's going to be a complete pain to download the repository every single time a change is made. So after getting all of the prerequisites, you're going to want to head over to my GitHub. I'll put a link in the description below. And if you guys want to follow me on there, that would be awesome. Um, but it's, it's not really necessary if you guys don't want to. <laughs> then just click on the sneaker bot tutorial series repository. Once you're there, you can star the repo if you want to. This makes it so that whenever a commit is made, it shows up on your homepage. And then click that green button to get the URL of the repository. Then open up a terminal window and type in git clone and then the URL of the repository. Then it's going to start cloning the repository. Yours is probably going to take a little bit longer than this, but this will basically just clone everything onto your system. Then you want to go into the SneakerBot Tutorials directory, CD works, or you can just navigate and then open up a new terminal window. And this is where pip comes in. So there's a file in this repository called requirements.txt, and this contains every single Python module you need to run this, as well as the version numbers of the ones that I developed the program with. So when you run pip install, you can add a dash r parameter, and it will tell pip to recursively go through each line in this requirements.txt file and install every single module, rather than doing it individually. So this is most likely going to take a lot longer for you guys. Um, I already had all of these installed. But after all of these are done, you can then start Python app.py. And this is going to start a, uh, a locally hosted web app that you can access from any browser on your computer. So you just copy this URL right here and then type it into your browser like this. And then you can see this is just a Flask web app uh, that contains a pretty basic bootstrap template. Obviously, you can pretty clearly see that this is uh, just a template. There's not any good information on there, um, but that's where the whole GUI of the program is going to be hosted. And then now I'm just going to show you guys how to update the repository from the command line without having to re-download it each time. So after opening up a terminal window in the SneakerBot Tutorials repository folder, you can run a git pull, and it should update the repository with any changes I've made. Perfect. So now that you guys have a Python environment that will allow you to run this without issue, I'd like to briefly explain the differences that I've made in the program since the tutorial series. So obviously Adidas has the splash page now with the Yeezy releases. So unfortunately the splash page doesn't really do much to protect against bots, and it's essentially just implementing a query type system. 
and from what I can tell, getting past the splash page is pretty much completely random. And then obviously with proxies and whatnot, you get multiple chances to buy the shoe because you have multiple IPs and it's kind of like multiple tries to get past the splash page. So what that means is that it's making it significantly harder for those who are manually trying to get the shoe with just a single IP address, no proxies. And it makes it much more likely that you'll actually cop a pair if you have a large amount of proxies because by default you'd have more chances of getting past the splash screen. So say you have 100 proxies, it's easy to say like, oh hey, I have 100 chances, so I know I'm going to get the shoe. But honestly, that's, that's easier said than done. So what this program is doing is it's allowing you to manage multiple browser windows simultaneously so that you can actually use multiple proxies and find out when a certain proxy has gotten past the splash screen. So when a specific browser window that's uh, using a proxy got past the splash screen, transfer that session to a window that you can actually control with with a mouse and keyboard, so there's no real automation going on in the sense that the browsers are being automated, it's just managing multiple headless browsers simultaneously. So um, I hate to say it, but it kind of takes the, the fun out of botting. However, there is a little bit of room to strategize how you're going to tell the difference between the browser windows. So since Yeezys don't come out every day, um, you, don't, you don't really have access to the splash page uh, to write tests for or to uh, detect if it's not on that page if, if you've never seen it before. So like initially I was using screenshot file size, uh, which was a pretty... I guess easy way to quantify uh, discrepancies between the windows. However, this was like relatively computationally intensive and there are better ways to do it. So now it's uh, it's just a class and when you initiate the class, it, it checks for the title of that page and then finds ones that uh, like did not match that title and then that's how you know if there's a discrepancy or not but again there's like there's no way of knowing until the actual release so yeah there's uh there's a ton of different variables that you have to get right to get a working bot but i'm excited to get this working and i'm excited to start making tutorial videos again thank you guys for watching please rate comment and subscribe